This is my meat eye, and you're listening to the motherfucking One Bar Lepagus Show. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagus Show. I am Lepagus, and I don't know what's going on with my lighting tonight, but something is just not quite right. I look very bright. But today we're talking about three sore spots. We've all had sore spots in our bodies, sometimes from the waist below. The Minnesota Vikings still have some sore spots on this team that we need to address, even amongst the optimism of a two-game win streak. Before we get in that, uh, this video is brought to you guys by Winview Games, nation's sports prediction leader and home for Minnesota Vikings pregame and live prop con- contests. I know all of you live and breathe Minnesota Vikings football. Put your knowledge to the test. Put your balls to the wall. They got free, they got real money contests every single week. New contests, pregame, in game. They're matching the first $100. Winview Games, the link will be in the description because I don't know how to put the link in our video because I'm not that technologically advanced. Um, again, first $100 risk free, matching it. If you haven't done it yet, try it out. It's a lot of fun. I know this is the app for you guys. Uh, I've had some success. I'm in a little bit of a slump. I'm not going to lie, but uh, let's hop into this. Three sore spots still in Minnesota Vikings. And let's preface this by saying we're all excited with Minnesota Vikings. Um, Two in a row, you just beat your rivals at home uh, in another nail-biting finish. Minnesota Vikings are back to 500. They're 5-5. and They have some very winnable games on the docket. Everybody's feeling good. We were very down on this team, but now they're right back in it. Uh, They got as good a shot as anybody not only to make the playoffs, but to make a run in really what is a wide open NFC, no really dominant teams out there. There's some very good teams, but not a team you can absolutely say is the favorite at this point. So again, as we're still excited, we're still happy about the team where they're at right now. There's definitely some issues on the team we should address. And these are the sore spots, the spots that are aching, the spots that are pussing. And let's start with the most obvious one. It's the offensive line. Uh, Kirk Cousins is winning and playing well despite his offensive line play. Uh, it doesn't matter at center if it's Mason Cole, Garrett Bradbury. That guy keeps getting pushed back into his crotchular area. Uh, it, Kirk Cousins is usually under duress, and a lot of it comes from that center area. Uh, Ole Udo's had a couple good games back-to-back here. Uh, Ezra Cleveland's been pretty good, but the center position is a huge concern. Uh, we've also seen our young left tackle, Christian Darisaw, struggle lately. He got overpowered. Um, against the Packers, Dwayne or uh, Dean Lowry was knocking him on his ass, which you don't see. I mean, Darius was a pretty big, strong, powerful young guy, and his uh, he was ass over tea kettle a couple times there. So, not something you're used to seeing uh, from Christian Darius uh, in the short work of uh, short book of work we've seen him to this point. So, um, the O line is a concern, uh, definitely an area of weakness, definitely a sore spot that we need to watch and hope can uh, begin to hold their own moving forward and hopefully improve. I don't know what you do with the, at the center spot. I think you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, whether it's Bradbury or Cole. So we'll see what they decide to do here coming up against the 49ers. Another sore spot on this team is just the running game. Um, yes, we've had some good performances, but there really hasn't been that dominant running performance with Delvin Cooks going for a buck 30, getting some huge gains. It's been a lot of more meat grinders, short carries here, you know, maybe a 10, 12 yarder every now and then, but two, three, four yards. You're pitching it to C.J. Ham, which is a kind of a head scratching move. I want to see the game where Dylan Cook just takes over and is just a beast, just a horse, uh, and does it consistently. And uh, I think Minnesota Vikings really are at their best when the run game is absolutely working, absolutely just rocking. Uh, right now, it seems like we're almost running to set up the pass, and the pass has been more effective. So, um, again, it goes back to the O-line maybe not playing uh, as well as they could be. Delvin Cook's still having a, a pretty solid year here. I'm not knocking Delvin Cook. I mean, this guy's all effort. Uh, but he does seem to be getting tackled fairly easily this year. Uh, Turf's been getting him a couple times, maybe a little ankle tackle. Something's been bringing him down. So, again, uh, running game's a little bit of a source, but not a bad one. This is like, you know, maybe it's just a, a small sore, not festering, not oozing yet, but one that um, you, you're kind of checking. You're keeping an eye on it to see if it grows and gets worse because – this, you know, I, I just expected the Vikings run the game to be a lot more dominant this season than it has been. And to me, it's still an issue uh, as we sit here at five and five. The last sore spot the Minnesota Vikings have, and this one, I don't know how to make an argue it. It's just the defense late in games. Uh, I thought the defense played great uh, pretty much the first half against the Packers. It, it seemed like Aaron Rodgers was frustrated, confused, 
Uh, whatever they were doing, they weren't really ready for it. I think Mike Zimmer did out scheme them in the first half. Then they finally did get that touchdown late in the first half, which we always see against, you know, for the Minnesota Vikings in 2021. Um, but it just, you know, the Vikings go up by seven late in the game. The next play, Aaron Rodgers throws what in his 68 yard touchdown to Montez, Vontez, Skeldon, Tez. Um, it just, you want to see this defense close out games, you know, assert their will, be the dominant force out there. And instead they're kind of bending over backwards, taking it and hoping that they can hold on or the offense can bail them out with 30 seconds left on the clock, which they've been doing. So I know we don't have Daniel Hunter. I know that's a huge issue. Michael Pierce has been out. Who knows what we have with Michael Pierce. We haven't seen him enough to know if he's a, a positive or a negative, but uh, it doesn't matter. You're, you're a defense. You got to step up. You got to close these games out and so forth. They have not been able to do that. And you look at who it's coming up. Um, I mean, the Steelers are a team that's always going to fight till the end. So you got to expect that one to be a very similar thing where they're not going to give up. Mike Tomlin, coach team, Ben Roethlisberger is an old vet. He'll be hanging in there. Uh, Matt Stafford, the same thing. The Rams, a lot of weapons there. You, you see the Packers again. Um, so these are some teams that have good offenses that will keep fighting until the end. And the defense isn't stepping up and closing out games. Uh, that's how you lose. That's how you lose close battles. Minnesota Vikings know all about that this year. So those are my three sore spots when it comes to the 2021 Minnesota Vikings and what we have moving forward. Sitting at five and five, looking good, but again, definitely still some areas of concern on this team. It's not all uh, roses and champagne. Um, definitely some um, Blatt's beer mixed in with that. So those are the sore spots. Let me know if you have any more sores on your body or on the Minnesota Vikings. And always, guys, I don't care if it's sore or not, for God's sakes, keep your skull in your hole.